are watching the Vision Channel, where Habakkuk 2 and 2 says, write the vision and make it plain so they that see it can take it and run with it. This is the channel where faith and vision collide to bring forth a manifestation. You're watching the Vision Channel. And satisfied single and satisfied so I'm gonna do what God has uh, asked me to do on tonight what the woman of God have given me to do on tonight and then I'm going to let y'all go but I'm telling you that this is gonna be fire on tonight so I need for you to tag every individual that you know that is single and they're waiting and I need for you to get them online and let them know that this is going to bless their life on tonight uh, my wife and I shout out to my beautiful wife Helen uh, we have been married in February it'll be 18 wonderful beautiful years so I personally have not been single in such a long long time and so when the topic was given to me I said single and satisfied I said wow I said God you're going to have to give me a divine day download hallelujah divine download of what this is going to uh, look like on tonight and boy did I tell you God gave me uh, something to share with the people on tonight and look man God is it's absolutely awesome and y'all know everything is birth through prayer I say that all the time so before I even much uh, say anything else let me just go into prayer God we bless you God we thank you God for this amazing opportunity God for this door of opportunity God even as uh, your wind blows and uh, covers us God and your word God come to life God I thank you God for the words God that will be spoken on tonight God I thank you God uh, for the wisdom God that you've given me God to speak into the lives of those who are single God I thank you God that I pray uh, that during this season of their life God that you send the right man the right woman God God that it be for them that it be a divine connection God if that even is the case God and so I ask that you let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart let it be acceptable to you and Jesus mighty name we pray amen amen and amen look y'all please bear with me on tonight I promise you this is my first time uh, doing something of this magnitude and I'm literally in the hot seat praise God uh, but we're gonna make this work from what I'm hearing everything is good to go so those that's joining me on my personal page on Facebook look again share tag this to the single people and let them know hey you need to get on and you need to hear this on tonight and to all the other platforms that we're talking to on tonight I pray that this blesses you and I pray that you stay connected to God. Amen. Stay connected uh, to God. This month, uh, Minister Sandra said that they're going to be talking about single and satisfied. Single and satisfied. And so if you got your Bibles, come on, because you know, you cannot do anything without the Word of God. The Word that I've hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Come on. Get your Bibles. Turn to Matthew chapter 22, uh, verse 37 and through 39. We want to look at that from the Passion Translation. Uh, Matthew chapter Chapter 22, verse 37 through 9. Somebody can put that scripture down uh, from the Passion Translation. Look what this particular text says. It says, Jesus answered him, Love the Lord your God with every passion of your heart, with all the energy of your being, 
and with every doubt that is within you. This is the great and supreme commandment. And the second is like it in importance. You must love your friend in the same way you love yourself. Look, tonight, real quick, we want to talk and share with the singles about committed before commitment. Come on, somebody put that down. Committed before commitment. Write that down. Come on, jog that, uh, log that down. Put it in your journal. Take your journals out. Let's take some notes tonight. Uh, for those that are single, I promise you, this is going to help you commit it uh, before commitment. Hashtag, write, write this down. Don't waste your waiting season. My God, don't waste your waiting season. I promise you. Let me declare that over your life. I declare that you shall not waste your waiting season. We're talking about, come on this month, single and satisfied. You got to be committed before you can make any commitments. My God, and you cannot afford to waste waste your waiting season you cannot afford to waste uh, your waiting season look you become satisfied in your single season by first being committed to God first before you can make a commitment to anyone else my God so hey, even in your single season that God have you in right now it's important that you become satisfied in your single season by first being committed to God God comes first before anything the text says Jesus answered, love the Lord your God with every passion of your heart. It is so important. It is extremely important that you learn how to love God, that you learn how to know God for yourself. Because if you don't know God and love God in your single season, how in the world are you going to be able to love your spouse when God uh, blesses you with a spouse and when that individual that you that you uh, desire to marry comes into your life? If you can't love yourself, come on, you're going to struggle with loving your spouse and there are marriages that I was just talking about marriages right now are failing tremendously uh, because people a man have wasted their single season they didn't pray in their single season come on they didn't have any vision about what their new season would look like come on and they was just stuck in a place come on they the Bible says to write the vision make it a plan even when it comes to your single season single men single women you need to be writing their vision of what your future gonna look like come on this is what she gonna look like come on this is how tall she gonna be this is a you know everything that you desire from your heart come on this is how this is what i desire from him this is what i want him to be a god fearing man it's about the vision that you write that you scribe i always shared this on sunday one thing that the devil cannot do the devil cannot read come on and it is important that in your single season that you even scribe what you want for your future come on because god says that he's the god that knows the plans that he have for you my god and he says they are the plans for your future. God, man, I, this not in the notes, but I just wanted to just share this prophetically that God want to tap into your plans. <laughs> he want to tap into your plans. He already know his plans, but he want to tap into your plans. And by him tapping into your plans, he can't tap into your plans if he ain't wrote nothing down. He has given you, come on, a declaration for you to write the vision and to make it plain. My God, and so when you write the vision and you make it plain, God says, I want to tap into your plans. Come on, so that you cannot be stuck with just anybody. Come on. We, so you won't just uh, be left, come on, with anybody attached. Come on, to anybody. Uh, end up with an ungodly soul tie with just anybody. Come on. God says tonight, single single men, single women. He says, I want to tap into your plans, but in order for me to tap into your plans, he said, I need for you, come on, to write the vision and to make it plain. Come on. And, but in order for you to do that, you have to have a relationship with God. It says, love the Lord your God with every passion of your heart. While you single, you cannot afford to waste. My God, in your waiting season, that means that, look, with every passion of your heart, you need to be giving God your all. Everything is birth through prayer. In your single season, this ought to be your best season for you to be in a place of prayer. For the right, come on, individual to show up in your life. The right individual, come on, for God to connect you to. While you are in the season of being single, let me encourage you not to waste 
not to waste your waiting season. He says, love me first, then your friend. Once you learn how to love God first, your friend who will be eventually, you know, one day preferably be your spouse, you will learn how to love them the right way because you've learned how to love God, amen, the right way. I always tell uh, couples, my wife and I, when we're doing counseling, we're telling uh, couples, learn to know each other before you learn to love each other. Let me say that again. Learn to know each other first before you learn to love each other. So many folks, they say that four-letter words, I love you, and don't know anything about the individual. They are attracted, my God, today to what looks good. They are attracted to that thing called the flesh, and they really don't know anything about the individual, but they are quick to say, I love you. Come on, if you're going to say, I love you, mean what you say. Come on, and so you have to be, uh, you have to be very obedient. My God, you have to be very obedient to what God is telling you to do. And I'm pinning that, uh, uh, Minister Sandra, so so we can uh, get those calls in. Let me put a plug right there. Look, you can call in and ask any questions on tonight at 281. 281- 888-4042 let me say that number again if you need to call in and ask questions call in and ask those questions it's 281-888-4042 I'm going to keep that pin so we can continue to put that number out there so you can call in look stop me so we can answer some questions so we can pray about your single season but let me encourage you don't waste your waiting season it is important that you don't waste your waiting season learn how to know God first because when you know the the more you get to know God, the more you begin to love God. And when you jump into your marriage season, if that day comes, I promise you, you will carry the same dis- discipline. It is so important that in your single se- single season that you stay disciplined. Come on. That you stay connected. Come on. That you stay plugged in with God. Amen. They didn't give me the instructions on uh, when the phone rang, what I was supposed to do. <laughs> but I do hear it ringing. <laughs> Praise God. But look, in your single season come on it is important that you stay disciplined that you stay disciplined uh, that you stay connected come on that you stay tapped into who god is come on in your singleness while you in your season of singleness it is important that you know god for yourself look in the text of first corinthians we good what's up we got a question we're gonna push press pause real quick The question is, I want to know why you are waiting. Sometimes we have a tendency to go ahead of God. Do you think while we're waiting, do we get busy for God, or do we wait? And if the first person that approaches us, how do we handle that situation, and how do we know that that person is God sent? Thank you. So I could just answer straight to... Hey, look, I love it. Great question. What's your name, woman of God? Oh, Sandra. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, Miss Sandra, great question. Look, you're already tapping into the notes, and I'm going to get into that tonight because that was a situation that happened, uh, and I shared it a little bit uh, earlier on the prayer line this morning about Lot and his wife. Come on. Uh, She got ahead of herself. (laughs) Come on, she got ahead of herself. And because she got ahead of herself, things didn't turn out too right for her. She tried to move before God. Come on, and God had already gave instructions on what she was supposed to do. And so, look, you can move before God if you want to while you in your waiting season and you will mess around and miss out on everything. That is why I was just saying it is so important while you are in your waiting season that you stay plugged into God and that you unplug from anything that would cause your flesh to fail. You have to unplug yourself. Somebody say unplug myself. Uh, in other words, you have to untie yourself. What is it that I'm tied to while I'm single that's causing my connection with God to not be a firm connection? There is st- Static in my in my singleness. It shouldn't be any static in your singleness because the only my God, the only person at this particular season of your life that you should be attracted to is God. Man, I love that. You have to stay connected to God. You have to stay attracted to God because there are going to be other attractions. Come on, there are going to be the other attractions that's out there that would try to cause you to lose your focus. And the enemy, he is great at that, with causing you to lose your focus to make you fall for anything. 
to make you want to be attracted to anything. And so it is extremely important that you stay focused in your season of singleness. Do not waste your waiting season. Do not waste your waiting season. Look at this next text in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I pray that this is blessing some folks on tonight. Verse 8 through 9 in the Passion Translation. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 8 through 9 in the Passion Translation. It says, so let me say to the unmarried Come on, and to those who have lost their spouses, this is Paul. Uh, he says, it is fine for you to remain single as I am. But if you have no power over your passion, so in other words, if you have no control over your flesh, come on, then you should go ahead and marry. For marriage is far better than a continual battle with lust. Some of us is dealing with lust at your single season. And the reason why you're dealing with lust in your single season are you tied to lustful ways and your single season is because you're allowing your eye gates your ear gates uh, to be attracted to anything and so you have to guard your ear gates you have to guard your eye gates you have to guard your heart gate you have to guard these places because the enemy wants to get into your heart he wants to get you come on to, to, to come on shout out to the man of God the armor of God he wants you to get you come on to take off certain parts of this armor and the moment you do that you will find your Yourself falling for anything and those you will find yourself watch this attracted to lust but not really attracted to the individual come on my god attracted to things come on but you're really not attracted to the individual come on we're going to talk about it later on here in a little bit about what happened come on uh, uh with lot matter of fact if i could just even must just jump into it uh in a little bit it's going to bless your life but i promise you marriage he says marriage is far better than a continual battle uh with lust but do you you don't want to just uh, uh, be attracted to anything or you don't want to just go and marry anything. That is why going back to what I was saying earlier, it is so important that you write the vision. Come on. And that you make it plain. I, we write our visions for everything. My wife and I, we have a vision. Come on. I have a vision that I pray for for my daughters and for my sons. Come on. That I, you know, God, let it be the right individual that my daughter be attracted to. Let it be the right individual that my sons will be attracted to. These are things that's parents, you know, that you can do to prevent your children, come on, to being attracted to anything. You guard them, come on, and teach them how to begin to guard themselves so that when they get older, they won't be attracted, come on, to anything. It is important that even, let me plug this in, it is important even now that you begin to write the visions for your children, come on, and teach them how to begin to describe their visions for their future now, come on. Now is the time for them to even must do those things now. And I'm not getting to, I mean, getting into details and, and, and going all deep, you know, as far as uh, uh, talking about certain subjects, but just keeping it from a child perspective, but teaching them the importance of scribing uh, to God about their future. Single people who jump seasons to be married struggled in their marriage because they never was meant to be married in the first place. Let me say that again. Single people who jump seasons, come on, to be married, they struggle in their marriage because they was never meant to be married in the first first place. There are people that I know that get married because somebody else uh, that they, they somebody else marriage they saw they saw their marriage and so they wanted to be married. Come on, uh, there are individuals that get married. Just because they're attracted, come on to that individual uh, smile, six pack. Come on, they they smiling, but they don't know behind the scenes they're a pedophile. They don't know behind the scenes that they they dealing with witchcraft. They don't know behind the scenes that they're an abuser. Come on, they don't know behind the scenes that because they've never really got to know this individual, and so they'll say I do before they even much uh, say I know. <laughs> you gotta know before you say I do. Come on, let me help the single people know before you say I do. Let me say it one more time to that individual that's way back there in the back. Look, say I know. Look, get to know the individual before you say you do. Let me say it again. You cannot afford to, my God, to to, to, to waste your waiting season, uh, woman of God. You cannot afford, come on, to waste your waiting season, man of God. You got to stay plugged in. You have to stay connected. I promise you, God has the best person out there for you if that is even much God's plan for you. 
for some of us it is for some of us to stay single because God has bigger plans for you in your single season come on and for some of us God wants us to be married for some of us God never intended for us to get married but as the woman of God called in with the question we'll move or we'll jump seasons and we'll jump ahead of God instead of waiting for God I say this all the time and I give you this nugget I never look for confirmation I expect confirmation come on I never look for confirmation I expect confirmation why would I expect confirmation and not look for confirmation I don't have to look for confirmation when I stay connected to God and so I expect confirmation because I stay connected my God single women single men of God it is important that you stay connected my God stay connected to God and you won't have to go looking to see if he was the right one come on because you can connected with God, God would tell you to unplug quick because that's not the one. Come on. Come on, man of God. You would know she's not the one because you've already been in your prayer closet. Come on. You've already prayed about how she gonna look, how she gonna smell. Come on. What? Come on. How, everything about her. You've already prayed about those things. And so when somebody walks up, come on, and you know, come on, that is not it. Come on. You know that that individual is a Jezebel. You know, come on, that individual is a Bathsheba. Come on. You know that that individual is not the one that you been praying for her. Come on. You can't fault God when you have not been praying. Come on. Some of us, we fault God when we jump into these relationships and we want to ask God, God, why did you put me in this relationship? Why did you allow me to get into this particular relationship? And God was like, I never gave you access to it. <laughs> My God, I never gave you access to it. I, I didn't tell you come on to go marry him. I didn't tell you to go marry her. You jumped the broom. Come on. You jumped before me. You jumped seasons. Come on. You wasted your waiting season. My God, if you don't hear nothing else tonight, you got to understand that you cannot afford men of God or woman of God to waste your waiting season. My God, there are individuals that God is going to raise up to be married for years. I'm talking about years and then marriage is going to be abundant. It's going to have abundance and it's going to flourish and it's going to be great and kids, multiplication, all that's going to be attached to you because you was patient in your waiting season. You was willing to wait on God to send you the right individual. Come on. Your no was anointed. My God, you didn't even much want, you didn't much have a desire to date. Come on. You didn't much have a desire to get close because your no was anointed. My God. So he says, look, if you have no power over your passions and you should go and marry again, do not jump into seasons to be married and end up struggling in your marriage because you was never he was never uh, uh, meant uh, to be married in the first place. Look, next scripture real quick. Isaiah chapter 43. Look, I, I want to share a scripture with this because I don't want to just give you what Calvin thinks. I want to just give you what the word of God says and then just give what God has downloaded. Look, Isaiah chapter 43. Somebody put that scripture down. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 through 2. Come on, single people. Uh, this is definitely a scripture that you need to have in your back pocket because God says you have absolutely nothing to fear. Come on, in your single season because you waiting on me. Come on. It, you, it says, fear not for I have redeemed you. Come on single people. Come on. Single people, you need to be rejoicing on tonight because the Lord says, you have nothing to fear. Now he says that I have redeemed you and he says, I've called you by name. My God, he says, come on. He says, fear not. Come on. He says, I've redeemed you. Come on. And you have absolutely nothing to worry about because I have called you by name. Come on. And when God calls you by name, he declares in this scripture that you are mine my God and because you are mine watch this that means that you can't just be attached to anything because you belong to the master come on you can't be attached to anything come on because you belong come on to Abba you belong come on uh, uh, to, to, to the provider to Jehovah uh, Jireh Jehovah Nisi come on because of who you belong to God says in your single season you have absolutely nothing to fear if you stay connected come on you have absolutely nothing to be worried about because he says I I've redeemed you. Come on. And he says his redemption is the best redemption. He, he says, I pulled you, my God. He says, I pulled you out of that relationship purposely. Come on. Because you were mine. My God. He says, I had to, come on. He's a jealous God. Come on. And he protects his children. He's a jealous God. Come on. And he watches over his sons and his daughters. Come on. Anybody glad tonight that we serve a jealous God? Come on. That he pulled you out of some things. Come on. That he redeemed you. You was in a relationship and it was toxic. Come on. You 
was in a relationship, you was getting ready to jump in a relationship, you was getting ready to get into a relationship, but God said, fear not, come on, I've redeemed you, I've stamped you as mine, and so you can't be attached to him, you can't be attached to her, because I, I see some things that you can't see, come on, because I'm omnipresence, come on, he's smiling in your face, but behind the scenes, he's doing some other things, come on, she's smiling in your face, but behind the scenes, she's doing some other things, I've redeemed you, come on, I pulled you, I had to snatch you out of that, come on, it's yes, Sunday, we was talking about snatching, God snatching, come on, God says, I had to snatch you out of that relationship purposely, because he was not good for you, He, she was not good for you, and so he says, fear not, I have redeemed you, I've called you by name, and that I've declared that you are mine, single people, come on, don't be tripping, come on, about Peanut, Pee Wee, and Jumba, them, because God has declared that you is his, come on, he says that you is married to me, come on, you got the best husband, the best father, come on, the best connection in your single season. Single people, you cannot afford to waste your wait, your waiting season. My God, you cannot afford to waste your waiting season because God says, come on, I'm snatching you out of some things purposely because that joker will try to destroy you. He will try to de destroy your lineage. Come on, and then it becomes generational. That's a whole nother teaching. Come on, it becomes generational. Now you're dealing not only with you, but you, now you're dealing with your kids. Come on. Because it was never meant for you and him to have a child. You and her to have a child. But because you was too quick to jump the broom. Come on. Because you was too quick to say I do and you did not know. My God. If you're just tapping on. We're talking about single and satisfied. Come on. And in order for you to be single and satisfied you cannot be too quick. My God. Today. You cannot be too quick to say I do before you know. Come on. So you gotta ask God before I begin to say I do. God, snatch me out of some things so that I can know. Come on. Snatch me out of some things so that you can so that you can download into my heart. Come on. What is really going on? It, it ought to be a prayer. Come on. Your single season. This ought to be your best season as a sniper, as an intercessor to pray. Come on. Because you're connected to God so that God can expose to you. Come on. Who is who and what is what so that you won't just fall for anything because we're all, come on, all of all of sin, come on, and come short of the glory, come on, but you shouldn't have to purposely fall short of the glory because you was disobedient to the connection, come on, God says, come on, when you stay connected to me, come on, I'll make everything right for you, when you stay connected to me, you'll know that I've called you by name, come on, and so even when they try to get in your inbox, oh, come on, he says, I'll call you by name and tell you you need to block them, come on, some of you need to block some folks right now, come on, that's in your inbox, come on, they're they married and they in your inbox. That's a sign right there that you, come on, that shouldn't satisfy you. Why would you even much want to be inboxing somebody? Come on, that's married. Come on, you single and satisfied. Come on, God will give you, come on, signs and wonders. Come on, some of us is attached to miracles but we ignore the signs and wonders and God says, I gave you a sign when he got in your inbox. Come on, I gave you a sign, come on, when she was asking for other things. Come on, and you said that I was trying to control myself. I was trying to hold myself but every time she come around. She wants to get sexual with me. She wants to, 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 you know, to throw herself at me. And God, this is not what I wanted. This is not what I desired. And God says, because I called you by name, I'm snatching you out. My God, single men and women, I promise you. He says, I'm snatching you out of some things. <laughs> I'm snatching you out of some things. Come on. Because that joker, come on, was going to harm you. That joker, come on, was a pedophile. That joker, my God, was a rape. My God, that joker, come on. She, come on, was, the, was, the, was a lust of that she was Bathsheba, my God. And she was, come on, Jezebel, come on. And she was, come on, she was that harlot. Come on, I had to snatch you out of that. I need to get to the rest of this text. When you pass through the waters, you're gonna pass through the waters, single people. Look, you're gonna pass through some waters. The waters, come on, they're gonna they're gonna start shallow, and you're gonna feel like everything is peaches and cream. And then when those deep waters come, come on, you gotta go back to to to, to the word of God at the beginning of this text where he says, You have absolutely nothing to fear because he says, I will be with you through the rivers. And he says, They shall not overwhelm you, and when you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. Single people, if you 
you don't have no other scripture, you need to get this scripture, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1 through 2, and you need to put that in your back pocket, your front pocket, and your side pockets. Come on. And you need to carry it with you. Come on. And every time one of those jokers, come on, stuff. every time one of those jokers try to attach to you, and I'm using a joker because I believe that I can use joker in the form of female or male. Come on. Because you got some female jokers and you got some male jokers. Come on. But you don't want to be attached to no joker in this season. Come on. You cannot afford <laughs> to waste. Come on. Your waiting season. You must first become committed. Come on. Before your commitment. Come on. There are folks that are failing in their marriages right now because they want to be, come on, com co uh, committed, come on, to something that they was never com uh, committed to. Come on. You can't make a commitment, come on, at that altar and you was never committed, my God, to your bride or to your groom. My God. And so you have to be careful again from getting out of this season and walking into the season of marriage and you was never committed to it. My God. There are folks they get married and they spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and they was never, my God, committed to the marriage. My God, they was already creeping before they even must said, I do. It is extremely important, my God, that you, my God, is committed, my God, to God before you can make a commitment to anybody else. Somebody, come on, say, I need to be committed. Come on, somebody say, I need to be committed. Come on, somebody declare that tonight. God, make sure that I am committed to you. Come on, because if you you're committed to, to God, your commitments would be, my God, it would begin to make sense. Because, come on, when you're committed to God, come on, who you getting your instructions from? Come on. If you're not committed to God, come on, then you would get your instructions from the devil and you will fall, come on, you will fall, come on, from Morris uh, Chestnut and them, come on, you will fall from them jokers, come on, because you're committed to the wrong individual, come on, but when you stay committed to God, a committed individual is an individual who understands submission. Ah, come on. A committed individual is an individual who understands my God's submission. Again, if you have any questions, you can dial in 281-888-4042. If you have any questions, you can dial in right now. 281-888-4042. Again, a committed individual is an individual who understands submission. Single people, you cannot afford to waste your waiting season, my God. And in your waiting season, it is important that you stay committed to God because when you're committed to God, then it is a form of submission and you're submitted to God. And because you're submitted to God, come on, you'll begin to learn how to love your spouse well. Come on. You can't marry her, come on, and expect her to be a helpmate, come on, as she a hurtmate, my God, because she's not submitted to God. Come on. She got to be submitted to God first because before she can submit to you. Man of God, you got to be submitted to God first. Come on. Before you can even much know about submission uh, when it comes uh, to dealing with a wife. Come on. Uh, dealing, come on, with a woman in perspective. Come on. And so you have to learn the importance of being committed. Somebody say committed. Come on. I got to be committed so that I can understand what submission is all about. Women that fails at submission are most likely women, come on, that's either in a marriage that's ungodly or they're in a marriage, come on, where they never understand Understood the importance of being committed in the same way with men of God. You fell at submission. You're already creeping. You're already cheated. You're already doing this. You're already doing that because you was never committed to God. And because you was never committed to God, come on, let's go back to the scripture. It says in Matthew 22, 37 through 39, love the Lord. Come on. It starts there. Come on. It starts with the Lord. If you're not committed to the Lord first, he says, first, you got to be committed to me. He says, then after after you're committed to me, he says, then, come on, you can love your spouse and love your spouse well. Come on. The reason why you was dealing with the hell that you was dealing with was because they was never committed to God. Come on. And so you cannot be unequally yoked. Come on. My God, can't you cannot afford, come on, to fall for anything. Most marriages struggle with submission because most couples, again, was never committed to God. Watch this, Jesus. Let's use Jesus as an example right now. Can we just plug in Jesus for just 2.5 seconds? Jesus stayed single because he had a world to save. Come on. He was satisfied in his singleness because he occupied his time serving God. Come on, single people. Come on. Where you at tonight, single people? Tax 
some folks, come on. Tag some folks, come on, that's trying to understand, come on, why you ain't in the club with them. Come on, tag some folks, come on, because it's, it's, it's wasted time. Somebody says it's wasted time, come on. Tag some folks, come on, that they asking you, they texting you in all times of the night, and you can't entertain that because you're about your father's business. Come on, single people, you got to stay about your father's business. Come on, you got to, come on, Jesus, he was single, and he stayed single because he had a real to say. Come on, there are things, come on, that Jesus desires for you to do with your time, and that's why you cannot afford to waste your time in your wait in your waiting season, uh, a man of God, a woman of God, uh, because God says, I need for you to occupy your time well with me. Come on, and with his time, come on, he'll, he'll teach you, come on, how to swim in the deep waters. Come on, he'll teach you that even when you're in the deep waters, come on, that, that he was on the boat with you the entire time. Come on, and when that boat get rocky, come on, and that boat begin to toss, and it begins to turn, my God, and you will begin to understand it because Jesus is on the boat with you. He'll be able to tell you, no, you don't want to go to that side of the boat because that joker over there is about games. Come on. You don't want to go to that side of the boat. Come on, because that joker over there is about those games. Come on. You don't want to cast your net. Come on, that way, because that joker, come on, it's about those games. Come on. Single people, you got to understand that. Look, Jesus said that, look, I was satisfied in my singleness because I was occupying my time with serving God. Come on, serving the Lord will pay off after a while. Come on, we we, 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 we learn that in the church. Come on, serving the Lord will pay off after a while. Come on, it literally for you, man of God, it really for you, it, it literally means for you, woman of God, that serving the Lord will pay off after a while. Come on, come on, if you get to know God for yourself, come on, and even those that may not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, come on, it's, it's always time, but as we say at our church, the altar is always open. I'm not finished yet, but I feel to plug that in for somebody that may just be listening to Tonight that do not have a relationship with God and that's the reason why come on you're dealing with the hell that you're dealing with in your relationship in your current relationship and you know that God is speaking ministering Jesus is speaking to you right now and ministering to your ears right now because your ears hurt but in a good way because you're saying that this man of God that is talking to me on tonight is telling me that I need to first get my life right with God get a relationship right with God and maybe my relationship come on with my boo will get better come on maybe my relationship relationship with this joker come on will we'll get better he would go from a joker to being my prince come on being my priest come on being my provider come on being my prophet come on being my path of my house come on come on and so if that's you on tonight and you want to dial in at 281-888-4042 and you want to give your life to christ dial in i dare you to dial in right now i promise you god will turn your relationship your relationship totally around right now i dare for you to dial in right now i promise you those that even want to read dedicate because your relationship some of you is dealing with relationships right now and you have not even much reached the altar yet my god you have not even much got to that point you've been y'all been talking about the altar you desire to be married you want to be married come on but there's something that's been off in that relationship and you know what's been off god said there are some things that have been ungodly my god there are some things that have been that have caused soul ties to cause your relationship come on to be wicked and to be crazy and to be demonic and God says I can turn that thing around even right now I can turn that thing around tonight come on and make your relationship right because you're going to get your relationship right first come on with God Hallelujah. Don't waste your waiting season because you are determined to give someone else your time when you never learn the importance of giving God his time while you were waiting. My God, I believe, again, marriages are failing because individuals are idolizing their spouse <laughs> and they become tied to a marriage that was never ordained by God. I'm putting in a plug right now. I'm shouting out last week as they was covering a little bit about marriages and I'm sharing this particular plug because in your single season you don't want to become tied to something that is ungodly my god you don't want to become tied to something come on that is deadly at the altar come on you got to my god today you got to get your altar right at home before you can try to step at the altar with anybody else come on get your el belto my god i wish i thought a towel right now get your el belto right first before you try to get uh, uh your spouse right up before 
before you try to get at the altar uh, with another individual. Come on, make sure that your El Belto, come on, the house of God, make sure that your temple is right. Make sure that your altar is right before you step at the altar with somebody else. Come on, because you got to be careful of, of, of joining something or, 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 or getting into a covenant uh, with something or someone. Come on, I'm going to say something because that's, that someone is, is nothing if they not connected to God. So they become a something uh, and, that be, and that can be in the form of legions, uh, that can be in the form of demons, witchcraft, uh, uh, harlots, uh, whatever that may be. But I'm saying if they ain't tied to God, they tied to something else. As we say at our church, they shabuti. Shabuti, out of order, out of line, <laughs> out of character, the money. Come on. The press. Come on. You weren't depressed until you stepped at the altar. Come on. Something wrong with that picture. Come on. Uh, you Come on. You, you weren't angry until you stepped to the altar with that individual. Something wrong with that picture. Come on. And so you have to stay connected to God so that you can make sure, come on, that you don't become tied to anything. Ungodly soul ties as talked about. Uh, I want to talk real quick about Genesis chapter 19. And it talks about Sodom and Gomorrah, right? But I want to look at the last wife because she was married. I put this on Facebook earlier. She was married, but she wasn't satisfied. Single people, you cannot afford to waste your waiting season. My God, you cannot afford to waste your waiting season. Come on. You don't want to get connected to somebody or be tied to somebody and you are not satisfied to that somebody. That is the money. Come on. You said I do and you don't even much love them. Come on. You said I do and you don't even much feel wanted. You said I do and you don't even much feel connected. Come on. Lot's wife, come on, was not connected to Lot. She was more connected and more concerned about the things that was connected to Sodom and Gomorrah. And because she was more connected at, uh, uh, to the things of Sodom and Gomorrah, she was not obedient to the instructions that God had given her husband Lot. Lot was a wealthy man. Lot had this and Lot had that. Lot had land. Lot had crops. Lot, Lot had all of these things. Come on. Get into that Genesis 19 piece. Lot had access to all of this. Come on. But God told Lot that there's some things that's going on in this particular city and I need for you to get your wife. I need for you to get your resources. And I need for you to go to where I'm telling you to go. And I'm giving you the instructions not to look back. He's giving, he gave them the instructions not to look back. And what happened to Lot's wife? Come on. Because she was never attracted to Lot. Jesus Christ, because she was never attracted to Lot, Jesus Christ, come on, she was more attracted to Sodom and Gomorrah, come on, she was more attracted to the stuff, come on, she was more attracted to, 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 uh, to mammon, come on, she was attracted to all of that, and she looked back, and God instantly turned her into a pillar of salt, in other words, Lot's wife was stuck in time. My God, I hope I'm helping somebody right now that is single. You cannot afford to waste your waiting season. She was stuck in time, and because she was stuck in time, what happened? She got stuck, my God, in her mess. She got stuck in what she was attracted to. She got stuck, come on, into that, that land and turned into a pillar of salt because she was disobedient. Come on, to the instructions that came from her husband, that came from God. Come on, because the husband lot was committed, my God, to God. He said that I refuse to look back, my God. And because Lot was attracted to God, man, I'm about to jump out this chair. Because Lot was attracted to God, Lot never looked back, come on, for his wife. The scripture says in Matthew 22, you got to first love God. Lot was like, I've given you the instructions. I told you what God said. And he said not to look back. I was holding your hands and now I don't feel your hands no more. But I ain't going to look back because God have instructed me not to look back. You cannot afford my God today to miss out on your assignment that God has for you because you're still looking back. My God, you can't even much move past your single season because you have not committed are made a commitment to God. My God, you got to stay committed to God. Again, this was a soul tie that was that was that was so demonic that caused Lot's wife to lose everything. This woman of God was willing to lose everything. Single man, single woman. Let me declare over your life: you cannot afford. Come on, to lose everything that God has for you because of disobedience. My God, that is why the woman of God gave the topic: single and satisfied. You. 
you know how you stay satisfied during your single season? You got to stay committed to God. You know how you stay satisfied during your single season? Come on. You got to stay plugged in with God. You know how you stay satisfied? Come on. In your single season, you got to stay, come on, connected to God. Somebody say stay connected. Come on. Stay connected. Some people are married, but they're not satisfied because they were never tied to the marriage. They was tied to the stuff that came with the marriage. <laughs> my God, my God, today I'm going to throw a terminology out there and it may not sound right to the religious folk, but some of you need to let go of these spiritual gold diggers. My God, today I wish I had some time to talk about it. You need to let go. Come on, spiritual gold diggers. Come on. That is attracted to, to, to your material things. That is attracted, come on, to things that you own, but they don't really care nothing about you. They're not attracted to your soul. They're not attracted to your heart. They're not attracted to anything about you. They're just attracted to your money. They're attracted, come on, to your platform. They're attracted, my God, to, 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 to the size house you have, the car that you drive. My God, today, you need to untie you. Some of you tonight need to untie yourself from platforms. My God, you need to untie yourself, come on, from relationships that you're in right now because he drives a nice car, but he cursing you out. That is demonic. My God, he has a big house. Come on. But he was seeing this person leave the house. You've seen that person leave out the house. That is not somebody that you should be willing to stand at the altar with. Come on. God will show you the signs and show you these jokers before you get to the altar. You need to disconnect before you say, I do. My God. One of them, I'm almost done. Look at this. One of the most dangerous soul ties is being tied up to a marriage that you never honored. My God, today. <laughs> Come on. Being tied up to a marriage that you never honored. Come on. That you be, and one of the most dangerous soul ties is being tied up, my God, to a marriage that you never cared for, my God. One of the most dangerous soul ties, my God, is being tied up, my God, uh, to a wife, come on, that never that never respected you, my God. One of the most dangerous soul ties is being tied up to a husband, my God, that never uh, 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 honored your value, come on. They disrespected the value that you carry, come on. They disrespected the helpmate that you was, come on. That's one of the dangerous soul ties, come on. Uh, being tied to somebody, come on. Come on, that's disrespectful from their mouth. Come on. Everything about them is verbal abuse. Come on. That's a, it's a dangerous soul ties. These are things that if you're experiencing right now, if you're going through right now, you need to disconnect quick. Come on. That is not your future. Come on. I declare that that is not your future. God said that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Come on. The scripture Isaiah 43, he says that fear not for I am with Look, I've redeemed you. I've called you by name and you are mine. Come on. God would not allow anybody to disrespect you, man of God. God would not allow anybody to disrespect you, woman of God. And so if that is happening in the season that you're in, I promise you that is not the person for you. It is ungodly. It is not, come on, the individual that God has for you. God told, uh, uh, not, come on, he told them not to look back. Come on. You got to untie yourself from stuff, come on, that can cause you to become salt. My God. Uh, to become salty. My God. Lot's wife became stuck in time because she was never connected to God. Come on. While you were in your waiting season, it is important, my God, not to get stuck in time when it's God, come on, when God sends your mate, you got to first stay committed to God before, come on, you decide to make a commitment to man or to woman, come on, let me share another scripture, come on, Joshua chapter 1, verse 9 from the uh, New Living Translation, Joshua chapter 1, verse 9 from the New Living Translation, it says, be strong and courageous, do not be frightened, do not be frightened and do not be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Come on. The Lord is with you. Single man, single woman. Understand that God says, I am with you wherever you go. Come on. Again, the text in Isaiah 43. Come on. In the text in Isaiah 43. Come on. He talks about, come on. I've, I've, you have nothing to fear. I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. Come on. Some of us, come on. You are single but you're not lonely. Come on. You're single but you're not lonely. The reason why you're not lonely, come on, because you understand that the Lord is with you. Come on. You single, come on, but you're not lonely, come on, because you understand that you have nothing to fear. You single, come on, but you're not lonely, come on, because you understand that God has redeemed you. You single, but you're not lonely, come on, because God is holding your hand. Come on, it's the best hand called hand holder that you can ever have in your life. Come on, you single, come on, but you're not lonely, come on, because it's the Lord that's ordering your steps. Come on, you single, come on, but you're not, come on, but you're not lonely, come on, because the Lord says, come on, I 
I've redeemed you. I've called you by name. You are mine. Come on. You're single. Come on. But you're satisfied. You're satisfied because God says, come on. I've made everything right in your life because you stay connected. You stay committed. Come on. You're single. Come on. But you're already taken. Come on. That means that when that individual jumps into your inbox, come on. You can begin to type back and tell them I'm already taken by the Holy Ghost. Come on. God is. Come on. God is my lover right now. I'm, I'm in love with God. I'm so committed to God. This is not the season uh, for me to be in a relationship. You got to know, come on, when it's your season for you to even must jump into a relationship. God will activate you and let you know when you're ready. Come on, for your single season. When your single season is getting ready to come up and God is getting ready to send, come on, the right man of God, the right woman of God. God will activate you in your single season. You will know things will begin to shift for you. Things will begin to change about you. These, your excitement and all of that will begin to change because you know that God is getting ready to send the right person. Somebody declare, God, I declare that you will send the right man. I declare that you will send, come on, the right woman. I declare, God, that in my single season, I will not waste my, come on, I will not waste my time in my single season. God, I declare that I will not waste your time in my single season, God. I thank you. God, I'm single and I'm satisfied. I thank you. I declare that in my season, in my single season, come on, I'm single, but I'm already taken. Come on, in my single season, I declare, come on, I'm single, but I'm not lonely, God, because it is you, come on, that rests with me. It is you, come on, that comforts me. It is you, come on, that directs me and leads me. Come on. While you wait, make sure that your hands, this last point, come on. And while you wait, make sure that your hands are clean <laughs> and that your heart is pure. Come on. This last nugget, I'm done. While you wait, make sure that your hands are clean and that your heart is pure. Psalm chapter 24, verse 3 through 4. It's in the text. It says, uh, in Psalm chapter 24, verse 3, 3 through 4, it says, Who shall ascend the heel of the Lord? He who has clean hands and a pure heart. He who has clean hands and a pure heart. Man of God, woman of God, it is extremely important that you keep your hands clean during your single season. My God, I hope this happens somebody. It is important that you keep a pure heart in your single season. Come on. Because what you don't want to do is not have a pure heart and take what's toxic in your heart into a new relationship. Oh, that's, it always turns out bad for the home team. Look, you got to make sure that your heart is pure, that your heart is clean, that your heart is right. Uh, David cried out, creating me a clean heart, renewing me a right spirit. Look, make sure, make sure you are right before you stand at that altar. Come on. Make sure that you are right. Come on. Before you say I do. Come on. Make sure that you are right. Come on. Your hands are clean. God, wash my hands. Somebody declare it tonight. God, wash my hands in my single season. Make sure, God, uh, keep my hands clean, God, from all all foolishness. Uh, keep my hands clean, God, from pornography. Keep my hands clean, God, from tapping into other uh, entities, God, that can cause uh, my marriage bed to be fouled, defiled. Uh, keep my hands clean, God. Keep my heart pure, God, uh, so that I won't lash out, so that I won't be angry, uh, so that I won't be frustrated, so I won't bring ungodly soul ties into this relationship. God, disconnect me uh, uh, from past relationships that have wounded me, that have hurt me. Have you even much forgiven those that have wounded you or hurt you in previous relationships? Uh, some of you are uh, single and you probably shouldn't be single but you, you God still have you single uh, because you have not forgiven your past relationship and God says I've, I've sent uh, some some right individuals your way but you can't see them because the scales from your past relationships is blinding you from seeing your future my God today <laughs> my God today look marriage is a gift let me let me man somebody somebody put this down this is gonna bless you marriage is a gift and not a goal uh, uh, marriage, come on. Marriage is a gift and not a goal. Let me say it one more time. Marriage is a gift and not a goal. It ain't for everybody. Come on, we read in the text about Paul. Paul was like, look, I'm cool. I stay single. <laughs> Paul said, I know who I am. Paul says, I'd rather stay single. But he gave the instructions that if that's not you, go on and do what you got to do. But Paul was like, no, I'm going to stay single. Come on, woman of God. Marriage is a gift and not a goal. In your single season, you need to write this. You need to journal this. You need to stamp this. You need to put this down in the book somewhere. Marriage is a gift and not a goal. See, some of us, come on, do it the other way. We, it's a goal. Come on. It, it, it's a goal for us to get married because my mama got married. My dad Daddy got married. My brother got married. My sister got married. Come on. This individual got, come on. And so you end up following somebody else's footsteps, but you don't understand all of the hell that they went through and that they gone through. And that's not even your portion. Come on. That's not even 
much your season. Come on. Marriage is a gift. It's not a goal. It's not for everybody. Marriage is not for everybody. Everybody can't survive. Come on. Everybody's not able to control their mouth and their hands. Come on. Everybody's not able to control their body parts. Come on. Where they sleeping? Who they sleeping with? Come on. Where they at? Where they going? Come on. Marriage is a gift and not a goal. Everyone is not gifted to be married. <laughs> Come on. Everybody is not gifted, come on, to be married. Come on. Marriage is a goal that one day you wish to accomplish, but being married is a gift that God has ordained. Let me say that again. Marriage is a goal that one day you wish to accomplish, but being married is a gift that God has to ordain. Come on. And so you, when you get to the altar, don't be lying at the altar talking about you do and you never did. Come on. That's wrong. Come on. You can't do that. Come on. Marriage is a gift gift, come on, and not a goal. You do not want to receive the gift, come on, and nobody want to receive a gift that they unwrap, come on, that you was not attracted to, my God, come on, they was cute at the altar, come on, but when everything was all said and done, the honeymoon was over, you already fighting, you already arguing, come on, and so you was lusting, you was already married to the individual for other reasons, come on, and you was never attracted to her, to attracted uh, to him, and you was treating this like a goal instead of a marriage, my God, instead of a gift. Come on. And so you disrespected the covenant uh, because you was never committed to God. And so you missed out on the commitment to your wife or to your husband because you was never attracted to him or to her. My God. Some people are attracted to the wrapping paper and it is quick. My God, it's, it's too quick to open something that they should have never unwrapped. My God, the gift looked good on the outside, that wrapping paper. Come on. You don't know what's inside the wrapping paper, but it's just wrapped up pretty. My God. And some of you, come on, is attracted to, 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 to things that look good, but when, it, when it's unwrapped, it's deadly. My God. When it's unwrapped, it's harmful. My God. When it's unwrapped, come on, it can cause you to backslide. Come on. When it's unwrapped, it can cause you, come on, come on, to, to disconnect from God. And so in your single season, <laughs> do not waste your waiting season. Do not waste your waiting season. Man, look, I appreciate y'all on tonight for giving me this opportunity uh, to speak into the lives of those uh, that is listening and to those that are single right now, uh, to those that are waiting right now. Uh, but let me just pray out tonight before we even much close out. And again, if you have any questions, uh, if you need prayer for your relationship, uh, you need prayer for your, uh, those that are single, your daughter, your son may be single right now, or may be interested, and you're like, hey, Pastor Calvin, can you just plug this name in tonight? Can you pray for this name tonight? Can you pray for me on tonight? Can you pray for my marriage on tonight? Can you pray for my relationship on tonight? Some of you may be in a toxic relationship. Watch this. Some of you may be in an unorthodox relationship. Come on. Some of you may be in a relationship in a form of uh, 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 of 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 uh, uh, man and man, woman and woman. Come on. You you know my drift. Come on. You may you you know God. I need to be snatched out of this. Come on because. I don't want to waste my come on, I don't want to waste this season. I don't want to waste any more time. If that's you, look, dial in 281-888-4042. Look, let's pray. God, we thank you on tonight. Hallelujah. God, we thank you on tonight, God, for clean hands. God, we thank you on tonight, God, for a pure heart, God. We thank you on tonight, God, that you would clean the hands of your of your sons and your daughters, God. That you would clean their hands, God. Clean their hands and keep their hands, God, clean, God. God, and keep them, God, protected, God, uh, from the, the evil plots and plans of the enemy. God, we ask, God, that you step in. God, we ask, God, that you cover them. God, we ask, God, that you anoint them, God. We ask, God, that you all their life, God, with your grace and your mercy, God. God, protect them, God, from hurt, harm, and danger, God. God, send, God, the right, God, Boaz, the right roof, God, the right individual, God, that will speak life to them, God. God, that will be, God, the right individual for them, God. God, and even speak to them, God, if they're supposed to even be married, God. Let them not jump seasons, my God. Let them not jump, God, into another season, God, because of what they see on somebody else, God. But let them stay committed to you, God, so that they can make a commitment that will last a lifetime, my God. We bless you on tonight, God, and we bind any retaliation in the mighty name of Jesus. Anything that would try to retaliate what's been spoken on tonight, God. We ask, God, that you cover, God, this assignment on tonight, God, that you cover that man, that woman, God, that you cover that relationship, cover marriages that's been wounded, 
wounded and broken, God. Cover, God, individuals, God, that need you on tonight, God. Cover individuals, God, that need reconciliation in the home, God. Cover individuals, God, that was never healed, God, from their past relationship, God. Cover individuals, God, that is creeping, my God. Cover individuals, God, that is sleeping, God, and sleeping with other individuals, God. I ask tonight, God, that you will remove the veil, God, that you will remove the scales, God, and that you will loose individuals, God, to understand, God, they worth. God, touch that man on tonight, God, so that you can understand his worth. Touch that woman on tonight, God, so that she can understand her worth, God, and we ask, God, that the intercessors, God, is even loose on tonight that can snipe, God, and cover, God, this assignment, God, and lift up, God, those single men and women, God, that's in their waiting season. We declare that they shall stay single and satisfied in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. As always, I'm PC Pastor Calvin with One Team, One Fight Ministries. Know that my wife and I, we absolutely love you, and there's absolutely nothing that you can do about it. God bless you, and have a blessed night.